Hey guys, welcome into another video. Today we're going to be looking at nine tips you need to know when starting your first run through return to Moria. If you enjoy this content, please do leave a like, subscribe to the channel for more content like this, and also hit that bell notification so that you know when my videos go live. If any of these have helped you guys, definitely leave a comment down in the comment section below. My Halloween collection has always just about to end. Uh, about five days of the release of this video so you can go over there grab yourself some the link will be in the description but other than that guys let's get on with the video first is your bedroll this is the most important piece of equipment that you have at your disposal not only will it let you sleep out the night but it will also remove any debuffs you have on you at the same time while exploring return to moria i recommend that you keep enough materials on you to build one though you will need to have materials to build a camp half as well. Once a bedroll is on the floor, you cannot pick it back up. This may seem like a silly tip, but once you get further into the game, i.e. the actual mines of Moria themselves, you are definitely going to need your bedroll. I found that multiple times, due to the levels and distance down that you're going, you'll find that you're going to need a bedroll at least at some point to gain your health and to take away those debuffs. This will take us on to our second point, buffs and debuff. In Return to Moria, you will receive buffs by sleeping, eating, praying at statues, and singing while you mine. Though be careful on the latter one, you may attract the horde in certain areas. Debuffs are gained by not sleeping, not eating, or even venturing into the dark without a buff. The longer you don't do these tasks, the greater these debuffs will become. To the point where, at some point, you may die from them. Your buffs and debuffs can be seen in the bottom left hand corner of the screen. Green for your buffs, red for your debuff. Keep an eye on them to make sure that you're in tip top shape to take on anything that Moria or enemies have to offer. The next one is gathering. Now this may seem like a no brainer, but it is important in Return to Moria to gather everything that you can so that you have it for later. But what you shouldn't be doing is rushing off before you've mined everything that you can from the area. Having the materials to build and craft everything that you need when you need them is better than having to find them. Things like cloth for your bedroll and metal to repair your weapon and tools, well this is definitely going to be good to have at hand. Moria has a good system in the form of pallet, allowing you to separate your materials very easily. Although they do take up quite a lot of space, so in the early hours of the game I recommend only using the storage chest. As you make and build bigger bases, this may be the time to separate into those pallets. Next one is skills. In Return to Moria, the dwarves themselves do not have skills, but their equipment does. From having a shield to bash enemies with, to a spin with an axe, skills are worth using. In the early hours of the game, you will find a lot of goblins. You will make these prone with one hit of your shield bash, making them easy to attack or allowing you to attack a different enemy. Use what feels best to you. I like an axe and a shield. The shield to bash the enemies so they go prone and the axe so that I can do a high powered skill attack to take off a lot of health. Next is statues or the broken statues you find all around Moria. These are pretty insignificant at first glance. But these broken statues were the best place to find new recipes. From building new armor to new weapons, they're definitely worth repairing. As you progress further into Moria, you will need to upgrade this hammer to repair the statue. Next is the quick platforms. Not only are these great for helping you to get to new places in the map, but they're also great when you start mining out the ores inside Moria. At first, I didn't use these at all, and I missed quite a lot of resources at the top of anywhere that I mined. But as I got further into the game, I decided to start using them which allowed me to get to those higher elevations. It also allows you to get over a lot of the poisonous gases that you will find further into Moria. I do recommend that you keep some wood on you just to use these quick platforms. Not only are they great for getting over things, but they are also great for making a quick getaway if you do attract a horde. Though, do be careful, you may get shot down by arrows. I unfortunately found out the hard way. Next is hide. It's going to be a very important item that you will find in Moria by killing white deer. 
or as the Wood Elves call them. I'm going to butcher this name. Hiwarat. Let me know down in the comment if you know how to pronounce that, because, yeah, reading that, I don't. These are going to be your best place to find hide. And the hide will be used to create an adventurer's backpack. This will take your inventory space from 18 to 33, which includes your hot bar. This will make it easier for you to stay away from camp for a lot longer and allow you to carry more things to allow you to explore further in Moria. Black diamonds are the next thing that we're going to talk about. These will drop randomly when you defeat orcs, generally during a horde. These can also be found in the orc chests. To get into these, you will need to destroy the totems that are next to the chest. Upon doing so, a key will drop from them which will allow you to open it. In there, you will find a lot of other precious gems, along with maybe a black diamond if you're lucky. These are very important when using the map stone. You will need them in order to create one. I would recommend that you wait for as long as possible to create these map stones because of how rare this resource actually is. As you get further into the game and further and further away from your camp, you will probably need to start building but please do check your inventory and make sure that you don't use too many or create too many map stones because you may lock yourself out of getting further into the game unless you spawn more hordes next is the ranger's journal as you explore more here, you will find random pages of the ranger's journal these are used to recreate the book itself you will find the book as you explore, though they are randomly found due to the game being procedurally generated. So every time you play and every person in the game will be just that slightly bit different. As you add more pages into here, you will get things to do with brewing ale. This may be new recipes to create items to create better ales. It may also be different recipes to make better ale and ones that do specific things one that i found in my game was a hot goblet lager this will speed up your stamina and raise its stamina to max so i don't know about you but i'm definitely going to be doing the dwarven way of drinking a lot of ale in the game so that was nine tips to help you through your first playthrough of return to moria Please hit that like button, subscribe to the channel for more content like this because there is a lot more planned in the near future for Return to Moria. And also, drop a comment down below. Let me know which one of these tips helped you out the most in your playthrough. See you on the next one, guys. Peace.